For once, I'd like to first say thank you. Thank you to my church for giving me an opportunity to share. Um, there's, uh, I told you the other, or Sunday, I told you that I've got 58 years of information and 41 years of it of marriage and kids and um, try to figure out how I'm going to tell all, all of this or a good bit or some of the high, highlights of it. Um, but I love my church family and I, I love my uh, immediate family. They God has blessed me so much with those. And um, the first scripture I want to, if you brought your Bibles or if you got your uh, phones, um, first scripture I want, I could quote it or I got it wrote down, but Philippians. And, and if you're praying, your prayers, the Ephesian prayers and um, and the prayer in Philippians, um, this is part of it, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And, and thank you, Miss Laurie, uh, for singing that song for us. Um, has God been good to you? I know He has, and um, I know He's been good to me, and He's been faithful. Uh, and, and I'm sure if if we did a testimony service, for all of you, and uh, you you could say that God's been faithful in your lives and brought you through so many things. But Philippians one six says, "Being confident of this very thing, that He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ." Being confident when I when I pray that prayer or read that scripture, and that word confident stood out to me, and thinking that. Is our confidence still as strong as it used to be? Now think about that. I mean, we we take God's word and we believe it to be God's word, the true word of God, and um, I believe it from the Genesis to Revelation that that is true. And God said what He meant, and He meant what He said, and, and that we need to be confident in His word. We go to the doctors, we can be confident in them, what they tell us, can't we? If they tell us to do something, we, we go and do it. And, and we try to make sure we do it. The, the doctor on these eye drops has been telling me to one, one drop I put six times a day in. And, and sometimes on Sunday you'll hear Sally's, um, you'll hear her, uh, phone go off and, and and that means not not that it's time to quit, brother David. That it, it's time, Roy, to take your drop. You, you know, or or she'll call me at work or text me at work and say it's time to take that drop. You, you know, we do all those things, but are we confident enough with God's word? God said that we are healed. God said He'd provide for us. Are we confident enough to take Him at His word? Amen? He's been so good to us. He's brought us through so many things. Um, I, I was trying to, I wrote down several things and tried to think of what, what all could I say. And um, um, the Lord uh, blessed me. At the, I, I was the baby uh, of our family. And uh, I'm thankful for my mom and dad uh, that... Um, I know it was the highlight of their life, May the 2nd, 1965, that uh, I entered into this world here in Grady County and been here all my life. Uh, you know, I minister to inmates, and and I hear some of them saying, man, when I get out of here, I'm leaving Grady County. I hate Grady County. Grady County's no, not the problem. The problem is, is who you're hanging out with or what you're doing. That's the problem. So I, I love Grady County. I, I'm thankful to have been born here. And um, you, you know, I was thinking that, and, and I've loved, enjoyed all the testimonies that each one of my brothers have given. And um, brother, brother David Connell said that um, I hadn't been that that many places, and, and I could almost relate to him. I, I mean, when when um, I met Sally. 
um, I didn't write down, I didn't ask her the date on this, uh, um, of a, the exact date, and I'm sure she can tell you the exact date, the exact time, the minute, and probably the hours that when we met, but I, I remember where we met, and I remember it was a gospel thing, and there at the Agra Center, I remember all those. Dates just don't stay with me. But where um, we um, got married um, in November 19th, 1982, and um, I, Mom and Daddy signed for me. I was 17 years old, fisting to be 18, and they signed for me, and Sally's mom and dad was uh, evangelists, and they were fisting to head back to Oklahoma. And uh, so I, um, I thought I was fisting to lose her. So we had, to, we had to get her. Had to get her. So mom and daddy felt sorry for me, and they signed, signed for me, and, and um, I got married. I, I was fisting to be a senior in high school, and um, uh, Brother David had asked, he, he had heard a little bit of the story uh, about um, um, me having to, I guess it was probably my first year ever even getting to go to Expo in uh, Moultrie. And uh, uh, in, in school, you got to get a permission slip. And so they sent a permission slip home and they said, um, um, or it said, you know, parents. And so mom and daddy signed it or mama one of them signed it and and sally drew a wrote wife and drew a line and and uh she signed it as well and so uh you know i wish wish today wherever that is probably long gone but i wish we had a copy of that because i don't know how many times we've told that story of uh, that sally you know i was still in school and she she uh gave me permission to go to expo a and um but and also something funny in that year I was in in uh, several years I was in the mechanics class there at the high school and working on a lot of the teachers vehicles and um, that particular morning I, I coming in the shop coming in the shop and I was driving I think Mr. Cone's truck and, and was as I was coming in the shop I barked the tires or spin the tires whichever way you want to look at it and, and Mr. Walsh ran over there and he said don't you jerk around on somebody else's vehicle if you're going to jerk around on it jerk around on your own yes sir Mr. Walsh I'm sorry I'm sorry and, and then some of my friends there in class I ran over and they were like in a huddle and I don't know why I did it but I did I ran over to them like I was a, a bowling ball and just run into them and, and, and not in the truck me I, I ran <laughs> run into them and, and then Ran into him, and, and Mr. Walsh said, all right, that's it. Out in the hall, I told y'all about all that horse play. And I said, Mr. Walsh, it was me. I'll, I'll take the blame. And he said, no, that, all y'all. I done told y'all, get out in the hall. And back then, a lot, I, I don't know how the teachers do it today. Probably don't whip them today. Uh, but in our day, in a lot of, a lot of your day, uh, a teacher had to get a, a witness of another teacher to witness them giving you a whipping. So uh, Mr. Butler, the electronics teacher, was next door, and he uh, come out to witness us getting a whipping. And uh, when Mr. Walsh got to me, he said, Mr. Walsh, what do you think about this, a married man getting a whipping? And, and, uh, and so he, he gave me my licks. And, and um, you, you know, we look at those things, and we, we wonder, uh, you, you know, and we've laughed, we've talked about it several times, and... and you know, and most of the time, y'all, you, you've heard Sally a lot of times and uh, hiccuping and and, um, and and this November 19th, um, we, we celebrated 41 years of marriage. And uh, so uh, now it's went up another year that 41 years since we got married, she, from the day we got married, she had hiccups every day. So so I'm, I'm the reason for that. Um, uh, guys, some of you may may and may not have that problem if you get the blame whether if you're the reason or not but uh you, in all these things i see god brought us through so many different things and he, he um he he's been there all the time um and then um um 
And, and you know, in our life, a lot of times we go through these things and, and then all of a sudden, uh, you, you may be at work talking to somebody and uh, not too long ago I was, um, or every day I'm normally right there uh, at the desk they got for me there. I, I'm there reading my Bible or something and, and, and then um, uh, this particular morning, one of my daily reading was talking out of Genesis and um, talking about... Um, um, the, the fall of man and, and in the garden. And uh, this, this female officer, she asked me, she said, um, wasn't that was the reason why women have um, the, to go through the birthing pains and, and, and all? And, and I said, yeah. I said, you know what? I, I said, but, and, and let, let me give you another date that was a highlight of um, Sally and, uh, my life uh, was when Marshall was born. Um, no, um, June the eighteenth, nineteen eighty-seven, um, and, and we're we're young boy. We didn't know, or Sally probably knew a lot more than I did. I, I didn't know nothing. I'm, you know, like almost like dumb as a bag of rocks or something. But anyhow, um, I mean, we went through the. Lamaze classes, we went through all those things, and and uh, I, I paid attention the best I guess I could, and because uh, a, a great blessing, and, and you know, and I'm sure you've seen either on Facebook or you've seen uh, some of us showing the uh, ultrasounds, um, and I remember back then we we've done uh, they they did ultrasounds there back then I think, but we never did. I don't know if we ever had pictures like that, or, or and we didn't do the things that some of the young do today, and and, and that's okay. Uh, I, I thought maybe, oh my goodness, maybe I forgot it, and, and I, you know, I hope I showed up for it, but I couldn't remember. And, and so I asked, did we did we do that thing that you do the gender uh, reveal? And he said, no, we didn't do that kind of things. But anyhow. Um, it's a great blessing getting to see um, our first grandchild, blood grandchild. We're thankful for our two grandsons uh, that we have now uh, and can't wait to, um, I think I've been hearing several names, little Bump uh, is on his way, or Roscoe, we're not sure on the name yet. Uh, but, but, um, very, very important. I, I, I'm thankful I was there to to see both of my kids being born and being right there, helping right along. I was I was uh, doing the counting or and while Sally was doing the blowing and and and, uh, and, and you know me as an auctioneer, I, I forgot to, you're supposed to stop at ten and let them breathe, and I I just kept on going, and she said, oh, uh, you know, so, but. Something that, something that I, I, I remember, and, and I told you about that female officer asking me, which brought it back to remembrance. Um, and I believe as we go through life, the Holy Spirit will bring back things to your remembrance that, that good things and bad. There, there's bad things that we've gone through that God has brought us through. But I, I can remember when Marshall was being born, and, and like I said, that was my first time. I ain't never done this, and um, I heard, I heard Sally say, "Boy, when I get to heaven, give me five minutes with Eve." And I thought, "Girl, you better shut up. You about to blaspheme or something." I didn't know what in the world she was talking about. And then, um, which I, I look today to kind of give you a Genesis three sixteen is where where that curse come about because. See, because of sin, and and, and guys, uh, where that um, sin entered in, then the re reason why we're having to sweat for you, the sweat of your brow, you'll earn your living by that. Um, uh, but when I heard Sally say that, I thought, oh my goodness! And and that female had asked. She said, "That's the reason." And she was a young lady, but I, she's had some kids, and. Uh, 
maybe she didn't know. But see, God will use some of the experiences we've gone through, and it brought it right back. I could say, I said, yeah, I remember when Sally said that, and, and I, I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. I was just thinking, oh, my goodness, girl. Uh, you know, I, I'd read my Bible. I, uh, Mom and Daddy brought us up in church, and, and, and so I knew uh, a little bit about Scripture, but I was thinking, oh, my goodness, girl, you about to mess up. And, and, and then, and I know a, a lot of times our expectations, we, we expect and then wanting certain things. Maybe you, you just got your heart and your mind set on certain things. And, and I just knew, boy, we're going to have us a boy, the first one. And, it, and Marshall came and I was just as happy as I could be that, that she was healthy and, and um, everything was fine. And um, and they, so I, man, I let out a good uh, happy yell, and they thought something had done happened to Sally and everybody and Marshall, and they, they didn't know what, and they was all about the thing out there in the uh, waiting room, but I come out, and I said, it's a girl. <laughs> so I, I was just as proud and happy, you know. And, um, and then um, two years later, um, y- let me back up a little bit too. Um, you know, a lot of times when normally a young man and young woman get married that young, uh, they they normally uh, got a baby on the way or something. That wasn't the case. Um, God had a plan back then. He still got a plan in our life today. Uh, but uh, two years later, Roy come along. Man, I was so happy. Uh, man, I. I Got a girl and a boy, man. And 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 then uh, just working hard, trying to trying to provide, trying to uh, and you you know um, some of us that especially all of us that are parents can can really relate to this. When your mom and daddy was whipping you and they said, this hurts me more than it hurts you, you couldn't understand that. But when you become a parent, when you become a parent, you you don't really want to chastise or hurt that child. But but you're training them. You're training them. The reason why we do, the word instructs us too, but you're training them. And you, man, um, I don't know if, if this was one of your TV shows you used to watch, but I used to love watching Sanford and Son. Oh, man, I remember Fred would say, oh, Elizabeth, this is the big one, you, you know. Um, and, and I can remember the first time I had to really, I, man, I tore Marshall up. I, I rolled up that newspaper and I kind of <laughs> spat her really good and Sally said it wasn't good but I just spat her and I seen when I seen them lips say oh <laughs> I thought I thought I knew what Fred was talking about I thought I was going to have a heart attack but see that's that's that love you don't you want the very best for your child and that's how our heavenly father he wants the very best for his children. You know, he said, if if you be an evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more? How much more your heavenly father wants to give you good things? Um, and, and so many different things um, for our first 14 years, we lived in a 10 by 50 trailer, an old one, and by this trailer, thank thank the Lord for it, um, a mobile home trailer. It wasn't a modular home. It, it was a trailer or a mobile home, whichever one you wanted to call it. But um, we, we learned how to adapt. It, you know, and I, I believe in, in a, the road that you're on, you learn how to adapt. Paul said he knew how to be content. We... We, we learned how to be content in this 10 by 50 trailer. Now, I remember when the kids were small and, and, and 
our, our first before kids, uh, the first before kids, um, man, that 10 by 50 trailer was, it was big enough for me and Sally. It, it was fine. And, and then as the kids started getting bigger and more toys, it, it seemed like the walls began to close in on us. And, and it seemed like there were so many times that we we had going through a lot of things and um, um, working there for my daddy. Uh, it just seemed like there wasn't enough money. Um, it seemed like we were doing the very best we could. And, and something that comes to mind, and I don't care, in a mobile home, you can keep it just as clean as you can. But living in South Georgia, there's gonna be some, there's gonna be some cockroaches somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? There's gonna be some roaches in there. And I can remember, and we we were in church. We were we were having confidence in the Lord. We were believing what this word says. Okay, we were believers. We were tithers. And hearing good word and, and word was being sown in us. And I can remember hearing that, or, or there was a, a um, there was a lady that was coming to our church at the time, uh, Sister Daisy. Now, I forget what her husband's name, but Sister Daisy, I, I remember her speaking a word into us and saying, how big is your God? How, how big is your God? How, how big... You know, are you just fixing God? You can only work right here in this box. Or, or is your God a big God? Can't you, or, or can't you, can't you trust Him for a little more? Can't you believe Him for a little more? And, and I, I know that Sally and I, we begin to believe and trust in Him, and and um, we, and like I said, we were tithers. We, we were, um. Believers in what God's word said. And God, we were confident that God said He would do what His word said He'd do. And He always came through. Always came through. He that through that journey there, I, I don't know, we had people that loved us enough and they, they gave us cars. Man, we had we had a couple of cars, some of them, one that you had to hold the doors on, but hey, we had a car. That thing would go, and, and we drove it till it about wouldn't go no more. Um, someone else blessed us with a truck and a, another car. But I, I mean, so many different things that God has brought us through. God was faithful, but, and then, um, I, I believe in that time, we were still living in the 10 by 50 trailer that, Sister Daisy, like I said, she she kind of um, I forget who it was. I believe it was Brother Pastor Doug McGee preaching one time, and he he said you you can have um, I think he said tunnel vision, or, or you can have um, a broader vision. I forget he he called it a different word, but you you can only see it right here, or you can see how how big God is and what He can do, and, and I believe still living in that 10 by 50 trailer, God was blessing me. I was working and, and we bought a brand new car. Paid, paid that car off. And then we was thinking, my Lord, in this trailer, we're, we're about, the walls are closing in on us. And, and, and something else about that trailer, I, I told you we was content, but we, we learned how to adapt. If it was cold in the winter, if it was cold on the outside and, and you were cold inside, it, it, you knew it was cold outside. If it was hot in the in, inside the trailer, it was hot outside. That's you, you knew how to dress. And um, so many, so many people that Lord that God has placed in our lives of several times, um, want, living there in that ten by fifty trailer behind our our store up here on. 17th Avenue. Um, Leroy was playing playing outside and and uh, we had we we had uh, concrete block steps for the steps on the back and he fell out or, or fell down on the step 
and I was all the way around front at the store, and I heard Sally let out a, a, a scream that I knew something was wrong. I took off running, and about that time across the street come one of the EMTs, uh, um, Daryl um, Edwards, I, I think it's his name. Uh, he's passed away now, but he come running around there, and, um, and, and, and Sally had done put a rag over his head. He had a, a place just blood every time he'd pump blood would squirt out and and um daryl being a uh uh emt he he here's what he done he said he stuck it over over that place and counted i don't know how how many times 10 times sally says and he took it off and quit bleeding it. he knew what to do god supplied god provided and, and Daryl was black. Daryl was a black man. Roy, I don't know, he was how old, baby? Five, baby? She's saying three. Uh, he was three, and I, and I remember Sally saying she went to the grocery store maybe the next day or week or something and, and saw Daryl in the store, and uh, Daryl come over there and, and put his hand on Roy and said, how you doing, little fella? And he looked, thinking he was going to probably turn uh, colors or something, but... Uh, you, you know, and those little those little moments that our our kids, you, you know, if you ever if you've got kids, there's probably been that moment that they had done something that you was almost embarrassed or almost thinking, oh my goodness, I can't believe you said that or I can't believe you done that. But God brought us through all those things. God has been faithful. Um. 2000, 2011, March the 12th, 2011, or, or um, back back before or we, we moved out of the 10 by 50 trailer, uh, God had provided. Uh, we, we were going to remodel our old home that I uh, grew up in uh, out on Ridge Road, and, and, and our neighbor, uh, where we live at now, our neighbor, I've grown up playing in the neighborhood with him all, all my life. And uh, he um, he come to me. He said, "Roy, I know y'all need a house, and I'm moving to Albany, and I want you to buy my house." And I said, "Well, um, I'm gonna have to borrow the money, and so we'll just uh, we'll we'll go to the bank, and and I know the bank's gonna have to appraise it." And and he said, he said, "Well, I'll um, that that's fine, but I want you to buy my house." And the bank come appraised it. Um, and while we was waiting to hear back from him, he come to me and he said, I want you to know what I told you, Annie, in concrete. I, I want you to buy my house. I said, well, just wait. Let's see what the bank said. I, I got to get the money from them. And, and then uh, when he came back, the, the appraisal come back, and um, um, it, it was, I think, less than what he had said, or, or, or no, it, it was right about there. And, and then so he, he was asking 50000 I asked, and so we wound up buying the house for forty thousand um, dollars, and um, he, he was happy. The bank knew it was such a good deal; they paid it off, and we began our journey of, of buying our own house and paying. God provided. Same thing that uh, Sister Daisy had said. Can't you believe God for a little bit more? Because a lot of times we're looking at our circumstances. We were looking at how much I was making. And we're saying there ain't no way. We can look at our problems, our, our body, our, our our ailments, whatever. Uh, you, you know, how many times have we sung or we read what God's word says? He says, "Whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Are are you going to be confident in what God says? Are you going to be confident?" And, and listen, I I got some good friends that are doctors. That if if they called me, I, I'd go to their house and do whatever they needed for me, because uh, I'm thankful for the many times that they've come through for us, looking out after us. But our confidence needs to be what God says. What God says, He is faithful. Um, March the twelfth, two thousand eleven. Um, probably a little bit before that. Um, I, I'm on 
I don't know, maybe uh, 2009 or 10, I'm not sure, um, when I joined the uh, Christian Motorcycles Association, but uh, we started off in on a, a, a old 1984 uh, Yamaha, I think it was, and and, um, and man, when we'd go to crank that thing up, uh, me and David would laugh a lot of times because I, I'd try to wait and let those Harleys crank up first because mine, my Yamaha sounded like two Japanese in there fighting trying to crank up uh, before. It, it, I mean, that starter, it, it was just a bad uh, product on that, that particular model. I mean, it, it, it just loud. And, and so... We learn we learn how to ride on that motorcycle, and and I can remember believing believing. I said, Sally said, Sally said that um, you know, or, or she she even rode with me on it too. And I said, Lord, we need a bigger motorcycle. We need a uh, that one was strong enough to carry us, but we needed bigger seating. And 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 God put in our heart, well, Lord, we want a gold wing. And um, and we tried to, or, or there was times that I remember one time, and I don't have time to tell you the whole story of it, but I was trying to uh, try. I was trying to work it out, and and thinking, okay, I'll just go to the bank. And God had a bigger plan, and even through that time, God even uh, in my daily reading, God put uh, some scripture in there. I think Isaiah 40, 31 was one of them that said, uh, those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength and, and um, mount up on wings as eagles. And, and I can remember that morning saying, Lord, that sounds like a gold wing to me. And, and, and then um, uh, another one that I, I was about ready to go to the bank and, and not, not even uh, trying to buy a gold wing. Um, and, and the scripture that I had read and someone else come to me and said, whoa, whoa, Roy, I, I think the Lord's telling, he, he, the, my buddy was telling me, um, I, I know the Lord's talking to me too, but he's talking to you, uh, or, or the Lord wanted me to share this with you, and I'd already been reading it that, that week, and every time I'd turn on the radio, kept coming to me and said, um, um, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I'm God. And I promise you, if we'll, if we'll listen to what God's Word says, He won't steer us wrong. The Holy Spirit won't steer us wrong. Now, um, um, I, I said a while ago that we had been through a lot of cars uh, growing up, some, and, and I tried to buy us one one time. Uh, it was an old, wore-out police car. And man, that thing, we had all kind of problems. So you know what I'm saying? If, if you try to do it, God's, there's going to be a mess. But it turned out um, that in that time or before that time, uh, God had blessed us with a gold wing. Uh, this gentleman from Albany had said the Lord had been dealing with him. And he said, he said Mark, this is what uh, Mark told us, said the Lord told me, he said, uh, I want you to give your gold wing away. And he said, Lord, this is all I have. And then he, he took and um, he said, if you do what I'm telling you to, I'm going to bless you. Mark didn't know who to give it to. He said, who do I give it to, Lord? He said, you look through my eyes. And, and down in Deland, Florida, uh, we were down there at, at uh, Daytona Bike Week, and, and uh, David and I was riding off that Friday night to go into Daytona, and, and the Lord spoke to him. He said, that's who I want you to give it to. On that next Saturday, or next day, on Saturday morning, he said, he said, um, they were going home. I, I told him, I said, I was out there talking to him. He said, listen, uh, the Lord told me this week to give my gold wing away. And he said, the Lord told me last night I want to give it to you. And, and he said, now I rode it all the way down here. I got to ride it back to Albany, Georgia. And uh, But next week I'm going to bring it to you and give you the title. Uh, still a lot more story of that. But God came through. I, I had that gold wing. Wrote it up until uh, March the 12th, 2011. Every opportunity, every opportunity. I, I mean, I, I, I'd hear some of the guys in our chapter say, oh, Lord, he's telling that story again. 
You know, we need to tell that story. We need to tell whatever that story in your life, whatever God has brought you through. And um, I was reading this morning, and just a brief part out of it of uh, Job, Job twenty six fourteen, uh, uh, where where um, in Job's uh, man's frailty and God's majestic, um, it said just a whisper faint. Just a whisper faint, but on on um, March the twelfth, two thousand eleven, uh, two young girls ran the stop sign there by our store there on seventeenth. And if I hadn't have been looking, they had a T bone me from the side. But I knew to scan, I knew to look, and, and that that comes. See, in, in our walk with God, there's a lot of times. The devil's looking. He he comes to do three things: steal, kill, and destroy. And, and that you look back in your life and you see that that he didn't try that. But if you're still confident to God's word, you'll know that he he it didn't end there. Jesus said, "I've come to give you life and life more abundantly." And so, if I, I was scanning, I thought, "Oh Lord, they're they, they're gonna stop. They're gonna stop. no, they didn't stop." And I slammed on brakes, but I hit the back of that car and, and totaled my bike. Uh, could have ended that day, but God had a plan. And I'm still here today and still still riding, still sharing. Um, um, still got the old gold wing out there that I wish somebody else had. It's just in the way. But it, I'm telling you, God has brought, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my, for my church. Does that mean if I go to church, if I pay my tithes, that I'll never, ever have no more problems? No, that ain't, that ain't the way it works. Jesus said, while we're in this world, we're going to have trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So can you. I, it, there's, man, I had a whole bunch more scriptures. One of, one of the things that I can remember or one of the scriptures I had down to think about or talk about was the woman with the issue of blood. We, we know the story. Jesus come back over on this side. Uh, Jairus, the ruler by name. Uh, you know, Jairus' name was mentioned. The, the woman with the issue of blood, it, her name was not even mentioned. But they both had problems. They had a situation in their life that, that they needed God's help. Same way with us. We, we have circumstances. We have problems. We need God's help in. And we know the story. Jairus asked the Lord to come. Jesus was ready. We're on our way to go to Jairus uh, to heal his daughter. Uh, the multitude thronging them. Who touched me? What? Everybody's touching you, Jesus. And, and then turns around, sees the woman. And the woman, we know, you know, if you've been in any teaching, you found out that, uh, that this woman shouldn't even be in town. Uh, shouldn't even be around people. She's unclean. But she heard. I want you to remember in that story, she heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. She heard from somebody. Somebody had told their story. Somebody had said that I, I just got, I just eased up there and touched the hem of his garment and was made whole. And we know this woman, she, she had suffered for years. She had went to doctors after doctors and yet grew worse. Spent all she had yet grew worse. So it, it, it was confidence, I got to get to him. When we, I believe, get to the, the place that, Lord, I, I need you, and we get down to business or we get down to, to get my junk or my stinking thinking out of the way and get to confidence in what God said, that's what he'll do. At that wreck, I mentioned there out of Job, 
about just a faint, a, a whisper. To me, it sounds so audible. That day, I heard the Lord say, all things work together for good. And I remember telling them, uh, testifying to, they took me to the ER in Thomasville, and, and I began to tell the doctor and them and different ones what I'd heard. And, and uh, I said, it sounds like a scripture. I said, when I get to, back to my Bible, I'm going to look and see. And, and I was telling someone, I don't remember who I was telling, and they said, well, that's my favorite scripture, Romans 8, 28, which says, now we know all things. Now, you know, think about that, what it says, now we know all things. And I, I love that word, all. You'll, you'll see out through the Bible that Jesus, he healed how many? All of our diseases. Healed uh, uh, all of our iniquities. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord and which are called according to His purpose. God has been faithful in my life. And thank God He's still working. There, there's times that, that, and there might be times in your life it seems like, okay, Lord, you're done with me. You're done with me. Uh, you, you know, and um, real quick, I know it's time. When, when we came to this church, and, um, and I'd always love, after I'd come from the nursing home and try to run over there to see Sister Reba, but I knew she's going to tell me the same thing. But when we came to this church and I met Brother Clyde and Sister Reba, such a blessing to me. I love the Coleman family. Um, but I can remember, and I've been through a lot of teaching, but... And I know we'd been to faith churches, but I, I probably didn't really know how it worked. Okay? I believed, but I probably didn't know how it really worked. And, and so I met Brother Clyde and Sister Reba, and I'd see them here at church, and I'd see them. They used to set, go to Hardy's and get them a, a biscuit, and they'd go across over there, which is Maryland's now, which was a bank parking lot, and they'd watch the traffic go by. Uh, or I'd see them over in the Walmart parking lot, and I'd pull over there because I loved seeing them. I'd say, hey, Brother Clyde and Sister Reba, how y'all doing? Guess what they'd tell me? I'm blessed and highly favored. And then this is what my mom was thinking. I, I, I'm new here, and I'm new to meeting them. I, I thought, or every time, every time. And, and I could have saw them every day that week. And they said, I'm blessed and highly favored. And this is what I thought. I didn't say it to them. I just said, my goodness, don't these old people have a, a bad day? Don't, don't they ever have a bad day? Yeah, I'm blessed and highly favored. And, and not only was it a saying for them, you saw it. It was evidence in their life. They, the Bible speaks a lot about our speaking. You're speaking. You either by this tongue, I, 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 in Proverbs 18, 21, says death and life. I, I like to do it like this. Death and life in the power of the tongue. It's right there, both of them. It's a choice. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it will eat its fruit. It's going to produce. It's going to produce, and it produced in Brother Clyde and Sister Reba's life, and still... I promise you, I, I, I would tell the inmates about Sister uh, Reba and Brother Clyde. I'd tell the folks over at the nursing home about Brother Clyde and Sister Reba. I can remember hearing Brother Clyde and Sister Reba saying, we're going over to the nursing home and, and speak to the old people. <laughs> and we, If we ever had a play or something going on here, who was right in the middle of it? Brother Clyde and Sister Reba. They was always, I love them. But I love the teaching, what, what she was teaching me, too. And, and I think we got the teaching. We just got to start getting our confidence back in God's Word. Put it to action. And, and I said, we, too. When, when I tell the inmates when I come preaching to you, I'm not pointing my finger down at you like you no good for nothing. No, I'm just preaching back to me because I need it, too. I need to get it in line. I need to... I, there's, I've made a lot of failures in my life. 
But putting the Lord first, that'll, that'll change everything. All these other things, they'll fall in line. It'll work. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you. Brother David. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you lead us and guide us in the paths of righteousness. And we follow you, Lord, all the days of our life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.